four, three, two, one. Ignition sequence start and lift off of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, adding to the International Space Station access for future American rockets. And Falcon has cleared the tower. Vehicles programming downrange. Eddie coming back shows the vehicle on course on track. of the Terry Improved Malamute with Subtech 6. And currently Plus on your stream, you're showing an onboard camera. Second stage ignition. ACS shows the Plus vehicles started. tumbling. Radar 5 track and skin. Plus 40. PM, we lost links two and Plus three. 50. Copy that, MNO. PMs two and three lost. One minute. Launch team, be advised, stay at your consoles. Everyone in the LCC, maintain your positions in your consoles. In the LCC, maintain positions at your console.
So L40s one, have been zero, ignited. Plus one, and it's a lift off of the S139 stage. A very majestic lift off from the second launch pad. Plus 10 seconds. Even tracking. Rocket Kafi Gagarat Kesaki Samaja. Subsepal Hamko, Deknawa, Kie. A câmera do quarto estágio ainda sobrevive mais quatro segundos, mostrando a fumaça chegando ao topo do foguete. O restante só ficou registrado pela câmera número 6, postada na cabeceira da pista que leva à torre de lançamento. Ela registrou a violência das chamas, alimentadas por quase 40 toneladas de combustível sólido, além de vários materiais químicos de alta combustão. Em menos de 10 minutos, o fogo havia consumido tudo. Restaram destroços retorcidos.
of the Hughes Galaxy 10 All satellite aboard the new Boeing Delta III. All solids. All solids ramping up nicely. One minute into the flight. Solids continue. Good symmetric burn. Coming up on burnout. Burnout on all six solids. We have all three airlift solids ignited. We have LOS and data at AE right now. We have lost the signal from the data from the Delta Three. from Cape Canaveral Air Station of the Air Force Delta II launch vehicle carrying the new GPS-2R satellite. Then, just seconds into the mission, an explosion rocks the Cape. We uh, just had an anomaly of the Delta II launch vehicle from Cape Canaveral Air Station. We need to secure the area. Allumage. Décollage. Thirty-seven seconds into the launch, the onboard computers decided 501 was 90 degrees off course.
one zero. Have ignition of the Conestoga 1620. It has cleared the launch pad. We will have uh, first two motor separations at the 56 seconds in the flight and about 10 seconds. We have vehicle failure. We do have vehicle failure at this time. We do have a vehicle anomaly as confirmed. There's an automatic uh, failure and the uh, Various radars are tracking the pieces of the rocket at this time. We would ask at this time that everyone do stay remain uh, in their current locations and please do not move. in efforts to build an independent space program. But the machine was damned. This would become the most spectacular of all the Europa failures. To begin with, it went well. Ground controllers tracked Europa as it soared up into the blackness of space. But then, disaster. The Blue Streak first stage slammed into the fuel tank of the French second stage, and the rocket went up in a massive fireball. Enough was enough. The explosion signaled the death of Eldo. Через полгода к запуску была готова следующая ракета N1. Мишин, ставший главным конструктором вместо Королева, принимает решение об облете Луны. Баллистики рассчитали время пуска. 3 июля, 23 часа 18 минут. Все ждали чуда. Старт прошел точно. 
но на высоте 200 метров снова отключились двигатели, и ракета «Плашмя» упала на площадку старта вместе с 2500 тоннами керосина и кислорода. Мощность взрыва составила 5000 тонн в стратегиевом эквиваленте. Стартовая позиция была полностью разрушена. In this case, there were no human casualties. The catastrophe was not the result of individual carelessness, but it could have been. In a situation with human lives at stake, disaster is a potential, and lives are at stake, even your life, wherever toxic propellants are handled. Then we got the news that the rocket firing was to be delayed. That first test went way off course. They blew it up and it came down 400 miles short of the lakes.
possibility that trouble may develop with the Atlas or the Redstone during the countdown or during the takeoff is looked squarely in the eye by the astronauts and the engineers behind Project Mercury. This booster was not a Mercury vehicle, but imagine the worst possible situation for the astronaut, that his capsule is now mounted on top of this Atlas. The escape rocket takes the capsule away from the booster. Vanguard Test Vehicle 2 stands on the launching pad at Cape Canaveral in the Navy's second attempt to place a satellite into orbit. In its nose, a grapefruit-sized metal sphere. The huge rocket, three stages of liquid fuel components, is actually still experimental. For Vanguard, every flight is a test flight. Takeoff is flawless. December 6th, Vanguard 1 lost thrust only four feet off the pad and crashed. That flaw was corrected, but in Vanguard's tens of thousands of delicate parts, it's miles of electrical circuits, there's room for lots to go wrong. And the slightest malfunction at this stage means this. One circuit in the control system breaks down and Defense Department cameras record a pinwheel of fire. Another disaster for Project Vanguard. proceeded according to plan for some distance. During this time, the missile was stable in pitch, yaw, and roll. Then a failure occurred involving one engine. And shortly thereafter, another engine also lost power. It was therefore necessary for the range safety officer to destroy the missile by remote control. from the missile fell on the test base and in the sea just offshore from the base. There were a number of failures during the year and the United States promptly announced them. The first and most spectacular of these was Vanguard at the end of 1957. There were other Vanguard failures, all achieved takeoff, but trouble occurred either in the second or third stages. Explorers 2 and 5 Beacon and Pioneer 2 were also considered unsuccessful experiments. 